Is there anyone else out there in the universe? Or could there be smart beings we haven't found yet? Maybe advanced civilizations are keeping themselves hidden, or perhaps they're getting ready to do something big. And what if understanding the universe comes from discovering life based on silicon? Come along with us on a journey through space and time as we think about these questions. We'll explore everything from the exciting possibilities of traveling between the stars to the puzzling ideas that make understanding the cosmos tricky. This video will take you on a memorable adventure into the unknown. Are you ready to find out what's beyond the stars? The idea of venturing into the vastness of space beyond our solar system has fascinated humanity for a long time. Is interstellar travel just a far-off dream, or could we genuinely make it happen soon? Thanks to the progress in science and technology over recent years, we are now closer than ever to turning the dream of interstellar travel into a reality. Progress in propulsion systems, advancements in material science, and a deeper comprehension of cosmological theories are propelling us toward the creation of essential infrastructure and technology for interstellar missions. Despite these strides, the ambitious goal of interstellar travel is not without its challenges. The immense distances between stars and numerous threats in outer space pose difficulties and potential dangers. While optimism is warranted, it's crucial to acknowledge the realistic hurdles. Nonetheless, it's not unrealistic to envision humans achieving interstellar travel within our lifetime. The possibilities are vast, and the potential rewards could be extraordinary. The formidable challenge of interstellar travel is primarily shaped by the immense distances between stars. Our nearest neighbor, Proxima Centauri, is a bit over 4.2 light years away. Even if we could travel at the universe's current maximum speed, the speed of light, the journey would still take more than four years. Despite technological progress, reaching such speeds remains impossible with the most advanced propulsion technology available today, like nuclear ion propulsion. Even with this technology, it would take a spacecraft decades, if not centuries, to reach the nearest stars. To address this hurdle, the most viable option is to develop new engine technologies capable of achieving much higher speeds. Various concepts are being explored, including the use of antimatter, thermonuclear fusion, or even harnessing the forces of black holes. Nuclear fusion, the process that fuels the sun and other stars, involves merging two light atomic nuclei, such as hydrogen, to create a heavier nucleus and release energy. While nuclear fusion technology is still in its early stages on Earth, it holds the potential to offer an almost limitless source of energy and could be employed to power spacecraft engines. However, these technological possibilities are currently only theoretical and it remains uncertain whether they will be practical or safe for actual use. The complexity of interstellar travel is further complicated by the astronomical amount of fuel and energy needed to cover vast distances. Traditional rocket propulsion relies on substantial fuel quantities, propelling spacecraft at speeds only a fraction of the speed of light. For example, the Parker Solar Probe, the fastest human-made spacecraft, reaches a speed of 119.4 miles per second, which is still really fast, but to put it in perspective, this speed is only 0.064% of the speed of light. To reach Alpha Centauri within a human lifetime or less, we must find a way to achieve a speed of at least 10% of the speed of light. However, the paradox of this challenge lies in the fact that, to increase the spacecraft's speed, we need more fuel. Yet, carrying more fuel on board, the ship adds weight to the vessel, and this additional weight subsequently reduces its speed. It creates a seemingly inescapable cycle, resembling a challenging and paradoxical dilemma. Nuclear and ion propulsion engines stand as the forefront of current propulsion technology, showcasing superior efficiency in terms of fuel consumption. However, despite their advancements, they still demand a significant amount of fuel to generate the necessary power. To tackle this challenge, researchers are actively exploring entirely new propulsion technologies that can tap into the energy sources available in space. One innovative concept involves solar sails, 
which utilize the sun's energy, similar to how regular sails use the wind. This approach ensures continuous acceleration of the spacecraft without the need for conventional fuel sources. Another proposed solution is antimatter propulsion, which could enable spacecraft to achieve much higher speeds while consuming less fuel. Antimatter is a unique substance with the same mass as regular matter, but carries the opposite electric charge. When matter and antimatter come into contact, they annihilate each other, releasing immense amounts of energy. The use of antimatter has the potential to provide much denser energy than any currently available technology. Theoretical calculations suggest that a spacecraft powered by antimatter could potentially achieve speeds of up to 90% of the speed of light. If this were the case, it could cover the distance to Proxima Centauri in just over four years. Scientists have been experimenting with antimatter for several decades. One of the earliest experiments involved the creation of antiprotons, which are the antimatter counterparts of protons. In 1955, a group of scientists at the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory in California successfully generated the first antiprotons. However, the use of antimatter poses challenges. It is expensive and challenging to produce, and the technology for its propulsion is still in the experimental stage. Additionally, antimatter is highly unstable and difficult to store. Traditional containers cannot be used as the particles would quickly come into contact with matter, resulting in their mutual annihilation. Instead, magnetic fields have been developed specifically for the task of capturing and storing antimatter. In summary, the substantial fuel and energy requirements for interstellar travel present significant challenges to progress. However, the pursuit of innovative propulsion technologies and the exploration of energy sources in space are crucial steps in the right direction. Even with advancements in travel speed, interstellar travel is not ready for implementation. Drawing a parallel to Columbus, who did not navigate blindly in his search for a new route to India, navigation and communication during interstellar travel pose major challenges. For manned missions, the vast distances between stars introduce potential delays in communication with Earth. This could result in significant challenges for real-time communication. Additionally, signals from Earth may encounter interference, noise, or even be lost entirely, complicating the acquisition and interpretation of data during interstellar journeys. To address these challenges, spacecraft will need advanced communication and navigation systems designed to meet the distinctive demands of interstellar travel. One potential solution involves deploying a network of interstellar satellites that can relay information between Earth and the spacecraft, ensuring faster and more reliable communications. Another promising avenue is quantum communications technology which utilizes entangled quantum particles to transmit information instantaneously over long distances. This technology has the potential to revolutionize interstellar communications, enabling real-time data transmission without any delay or interference. Another viable option is the utilization of advanced artificial intelligence, AI, to assist spacecraft in navigating the vast distances between stars and adjusting their course as needed. This approach allows for precise navigation without direct human control, a crucial element for successful interstellar travel. Even minor deviations in trajectory can result in spacecraft being millions of miles off course, emphasizing the need for incredibly accurate navigation systems. One proposed method involves using pulsars as reference points. Pulsars are highly magnetized, rotating neutron stars that emit beams of electromagnetic radiation from their poles, akin to cosmic beacons. The emitted radiation, forming a pulsar's beam, acts as a consistent and predictable signal. This reliability makes pulsars ideal candidates for deep space navigation. For instance, the Gravity Assist trajectory technology used in the New Horizons spacecraft mission to Pluto relied on Jupiter's gravitational forces to guide the spacecraft precisely to its target. Despite the advancements in technology, the inherent complexity of any system introduces the risk of hardware malfunction without real-time human intervention. Such failures could have catastrophic consequences, potentially leading to the loss of the crew and the entire mission. 
In the absence of accurate and reliable communication and navigation systems, a mission to the nearest stars would face significant challenges and likely not succeed. While a spacecraft may be well equipped for its journey to distant stars, the most crucial component of the mission remains the people on board. Ensuring the crew's survival during the journey is of utmost importance. This involves developing life support systems capable of providing sufficient resources, including food, water, and oxygen. Current technology allows for the storage of only a limited amount of resources, which is inadequate for truly long journeys. Therefore, there is a need for new technologies and approaches to sustain life over extended distances. The development of regenerative life support systems is a promising solution for addressing resource limitations during interstellar travel. These systems have the capability to recycle waste and convert it into useful resources, promoting sustainability throughout the journey. Furthermore, the research and implementation of advanced food growing and oxygen producing systems aboard spacecraft are essential. Ensuring a self-sufficient and renewable supply of food and oxygen is crucial for the well-being and survival of the crew during extended interstellar missions. These dual approaches, regenerative life support systems and advanced agricultural and oxygen producing technologies, underscore the comprehensive efforts needed to make interstellar travel a viable and successful endeavor. Another option under exploration is placing astronauts in a state of deep sleep for the duration of their journey, akin to how animals hibernate during winter. This technique, known as suspended animation or hibernation, presents a potential solution. However, significant medical challenges must be overcome to keep the crew in this suspended state for extended periods without causing serious health issues. Prolonged exposure to zero gravity poses risks such as muscle atrophy, loss of bone density, and other physical changes. To counteract these effects, physical exercise and medical interventions may be necessary to maintain crew health during the journey. An artificial gravity system, such as maintaining constant rotation of the spacecraft, is one way to simulate the gravitational force experienced on Earth. This concept has been researched and successfully tested on various space missions, including Skylab and the International Space Station. Addressing these challenges is crucial for ensuring the well-being of the crew during interstellar travel. A significant health concern in interstellar travel is radiation. Space is filled with an array of radioactive emissions, and long-term exposure to these poses a considerable risk to astronauts, especially outside of Earth's protective magnetic field. Humans are exposed to high levels of ionizing radiation, including cosmic rays and solar flares, which can cause damage to human cells and lead to various health problems, including cancer and other illnesses. Moreover, exposure to cosmic radiation can result in genetic damage to DNA that may be inherited by future generations. To mitigate the risks associated with radiation exposure, interstellar spacecraft must be designed with effective shielding for the crew. This shielding must be robust enough to block harmful radiation while remaining lightweight to avoid significantly increasing the spacecraft's weight. It must also be adaptable to all types of radiation the spacecraft may encounter during its journey. Addressing these challenges is crucial for safeguarding the health of astronauts during extended interstellar missions. Researchers are actively exploring diverse options for protection against radiation in interstellar travel. One approach involves the use of artificial magnetic fields, which can help deflect or mitigate the impact of harmful radiation. Additionally, advanced technologies and specialty materials are being investigated to enhance spacecraft shielding and minimize the penetration of radiation. In conjunction with these physical protections, the crew may also need to rely on special medications or undergo specific medical procedures to reduce the effects of radiation sickness. This holistic approach combining physical defenses with medical interventions, is aimed at creating comprehensive strategies to safeguard the health and well-being of astronauts during extended interstellar journeys. The multidisciplinary nature of these efforts underscores the complexity of addressing the challenges posed by radiation in the space environment. 
In addition to the threat of tiny radiation particles, interstellar travel presents dangers related to debris and asteroids. Asteroids and comets pose a significant risk to spacecraft because they are challenging to detect and avoid. Even small items moving at high speeds can cause catastrophic damage to a vessel, emphasizing the need for protective measures. To ensure the safety of astronauts and the spacecraft, some form of protection is necessary. Shielding the spacecraft from potential dangers can be achieved through various methods, including constructing thick walls and using materials that can absorb or deflect radiation and debris. Certainly, interstellar travel represents an ambitious goal that demands substantial investment in resources from governments and private entities worldwide. The costs associated with interstellar travel encompass research and development of new propulsion systems, life support systems, navigation and communication technology, protection from radiation and interstellar hazards, and more. The expense of developing the necessary infrastructure and technologies is expected to be significant, necessitating extensive cooperation and commitment from the global community. However, the challenges extend beyond financial considerations. Potential conflicts of interest or opposing investor agendas could lead to controversy and impede progress. Such disagreements may limit the scope of interstellar research and development, emphasizing the need for international collaboration and a unified commitment to overcoming the myriad obstacles associated with achieving interstellar travel. Indeed, one potential solution to offset the high costs of interstellar travel could be the development of space mining technology. Space mining involves extracting valuable resources from asteroids and other celestial bodies, and the revenue generated from such endeavors could potentially contribute to funding interstellar missions. As technology advances, space manufacturing and 3D printing may offer additional cost-saving opportunities. Creating spacecraft and other materials directly in outer space can reduce the expenses associated with launching them from Earth, presenting a more economically viable approach to space exploration and interstellar travel. These innovative strategies could play a crucial role in making ambitious space endeavors more feasible and sustainable in the future. Without a long-term commitment to developing the necessary infrastructure, technologies and resources, interstellar travel may remain out of reach for humankind. A conceptually different approach to interstellar travel is the construction of a generation ship. A generation ship is a hypothetical spacecraft designed for interstellar travel that would require an indefinite number of generations to reach its final destination. Unlike conventional interstellar missions that aim to reach a destination within the lifetime of the initial crew, generation ships would carry multiple generations of passengers who are born and live their entire lives on the spacecraft. This concept has been proposed as a potential solution to some of the challenges of interstellar travel, including the significant distances involved and the limitations of current propulsion technology. By allowing for the birth and upbringing of multiple generations during the journey, the generation ship scenario envisions a situation in which the crew can sustain the necessary resources and technology to complete the mission, even if it takes an extremely long time. This approach reflects a more patient and enduring perspective on interstellar exploration. The concept of a generation ship is not without its flaws and challenges. Key issues include the recruitment and management of a crew over extended periods, the allocation of resources, and the maintenance of social cohesion within the confined space of the spacecraft. Additionally, there's the risk that the knowledge and technology required for the mission may degrade or be lost over time, potentially jeopardizing the success of the mission. Despite these challenges, the idea of a generation spacecraft remains a popular topic in science fiction and theoretical discussions about interstellar travel. It serves as a captivating exploration of the complexities and intricacies involved in planning and executing interstellar journeys that extend over multiple human lifetimes. While the concept poses significant practical challenges, it sparks valuable conversations about the future of space exploration and the potential solutions needed to overcome the hurdles of vast interstellar distances. In summary, 
the decision-making dilemma in interstellar travel can be likened to the classic wait-or-walk scenario, a common predicament where one must choose between expecting a more desirable outcome or taking immediate action for a less desirable but acceptable outcome. In the context of interstellar travel, this dilemma arises when considering whether to launch ships now with existing technology or wait for advancements that may yield faster speeds, allowing newer ships to reach destinations more efficiently. This scenario presents an ethical dilemma, questioning the fairness to the crews of the first ships. There's a concern about whether it would be justifiable to potentially subject them to a senseless sacrifice if technological advancements were to suddenly surpass the capabilities of the initial ships. It encapsulates the ethical considerations and complexities involved in making decisions about the timeline and launch of interstellar missions. Imagine being a trailblazing space explorer in a distant star system. You've spent decades, maybe even centuries in space, pondering whether newer and faster ships might have reached your destination ahead of you. This situation raises profound questions about the worth of human life, the duty of space exploration, and the significance of progress. The dilemma is whether to wait for advanced technologies that could enable quicker and more efficient travel. On one hand, it holds the promise of faster journeys, but on the other hand, it might expose the initial crew to risks and challenges that future generations might avoid. On the flip side, launching ships now might seem unfair to the crew as they won't benefit from the advanced technology that future generations will enjoy. Ultimately, the decision hinges on how society views the balance between the importance of progress and research versus the value of human life. In our pursuit to unravel the immense and enigmatic universe, science has become adept at wielding the formidable tool of logic. However, even with the most rigorous methods and cutting-edge technologies, paradoxes inevitably surface, contradictions that push the boundaries of our comprehension of the world. One intriguing paradox lies in the dark sky at night. It seems puzzling that despite being surrounded by an infinite number of shining stars, the sky remains predominantly dark. Another enigma is the elusive nature of dark matter, a mysterious substance that eludes even the most advanced instruments. And then there's the unsettling notion of oblivion, the potential disappearance of the solar system, our planet, and ourselves into the vastness of time and space. These paradoxes aren't just abstract musings. They carry tangible implications for our comprehension of the universe. They challenge our assumptions, urging us to question things we thought were certain. These paradoxes push us to look beyond our current understanding and explore the deeper mysteries of the cosmos. Ultimately, facing these paradoxes can lead to new insights, propelling us forward in our quest to grasp the intricacies of the universe. The horizon problem, also known as the horizon paradox, arises from the puzzling observation that the temperature of the cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMB, is nearly uniform across space. This is perplexing because regions of the universe, even those separated by immense distances, haven't had sufficient time to reach thermal equilibrium, considering the constraints of the cosmic timeline. The root cause of the horizon problem lies in the cosmic microwave background, CMB, which is a remnant from the time the universe was in a hot and dense state during the Big Bang. The CMB is essentially nearly perfect blackbody radiation, characterized by a uniform temperature of approximately 2.7 Kelvin in all directions. However, given the continuous expansion of the universe over about 13.8 billion years, certain regions separated by vast distances wouldn't have had sufficient time to reach thermal equilibrium and thus should not exhibit the same temperature. This paradox challenges the expectation that the temperature of the CMB should be uniform throughout the universe. The horizon problem has puzzled cosmologists for decades, prompting the exploration of various proposed solutions.
A proposed solution to the horizon problem is the theory of cosmic inflation. According to this theory, the universe experienced a rapid expansion during its early stages of formation. This expansion would have effectively smoothed out any initial fluctuations in temperature, resulting in the near-uniform temperature of the cosmic microwave background, CMB, observed throughout the universe, but also provide explanations for the observed homogeneity and isotropy of the universe, contributing to solving major observational mysteries in cosmology. Another potential solution to the horizon problem involves the concept of causality, a fundamental principle in the sciences. Causality posits that every occurrence, action or event is preceded by a cause that determines its effect. In the context of the early universe, the idea is that it was initially in equilibrium, much denser and hotter. During this early state, photons of relic radiation were in causal contact, meaning they could interact with each other and achieve thermal equilibrium. This scenario suggests that the uniformity observed in the cosmic microwave background radiation, CMB, across vast distances could be a result of the causal interactions among particles in the early, dense and hot universe. The third solution proposed is the concept of cosmic variance. Essentially, this idea posits that the universe is far larger than what we can currently observe, and temperature fluctuations are just statistical deviations from the average temperature of the universe as a whole. The horizon problem is intricate and multidimensional, and it has not been completely resolved yet. Each of the proposed solutions, including cosmic inflation, causality, and cosmic variance, comes with its own set of strengths and weaknesses. Achieving a true resolution of the paradox may necessitate a combination of these ideas or even the development of an entirely new theory. Olber's paradox, also known as the redshift paradox, has perplexed astronomers for centuries. Named after the pioneering German astronomer Heinrich Olbers, this paradox revolves around the contradiction between the presumed infinite number of stars in the universe and the darkness of the night sky. The crux of the paradox lies in the idea that if the universe were genuinely infinite and eternal, with stars evenly spread throughout its limitless expanse, then in any direction we looked, we should encounter a star. According to this line of thinking, the light from these stars, no matter how distant, would eventually reach our planet. Therefore, the night sky should be aglow with the same intensity as the surface of the sun. However, the paradox arises from the observable darkness of the night sky despite the theoretical abundance of stars in the universe. Despite the logical reasoning, the night sky continues to pose a perplexing enigma for scientists and stargazers alike. Various potential solutions have been proposed to shed light on this mystery. One such solution challenges the assumption of a uniform and isotropic universe, suggesting that stars are not evenly distributed throughout space. This uneven distribution could be attributed to the presence of large-scale structures like galaxy clusters and voids, creating dark patches in the night sky. Additionally, the darkness of the night sky might be influenced by the absorption of light from more distant stars by intergalactic dust, further contributing to its dim appearance. Observations of major redshifts and distant quasars support this theory. In essence, the discrepancy between the theoretical expectation of an illuminated night sky and the observed darkness may find its explanation in the non-uniform nature of the universe and the effects of intergalactic dust. Another possible solution to Ober's paradox lies in the expansion of the universe. As we peer further back in time, the light sources appear to be more distant from us. When looking into the past, the universe becomes denser, hotter and brighter. Consequently, the light from these distant stars is redshifted moving toward the red end of the spectrum and becoming too faint to be seen, while the infinite nature of our universe remains uncertain. 
The Big Bang Theory establishes that our universe does have a beginning. If we assume the universe is finite, the expansion would mean that light from distant stars does not reach us because our universe is continually expanding. This expansion causes the wavelength of light from distant stars to be significantly stretched, eventually reaching Earth in the infrared range. Moreover, it implies that the light from distant stars may not have reached us yet. Moreover, it implies that the light from distant stars may not have reached us yet, or those stars have already ceased to exist. Alternatively, if we assume that our universe is infinite, it becomes plausible that, over time, due to the constant expansion of the universe, stars and matter could eventually attain speeds surpassing the speed of light. In such a scenario, it would be impossible for light to reach Earth, contributing to the darkness observed in the night sky. The enigma of Olber's paradox remains one of the most intriguing mysteries in cosmology, and unravelling its solution necessitates a deeper understanding of the nature and structure of our universe. The flatness problem is a paradox stemming from the observation that the universe is almost perfectly flat, despite the density of its matter being insufficient to maintain such a state. This raises the question of why the universe is flat and what exactly is meant by classifying it in this way. In cosmology, the term flat signifies that space-time is not curved and the amount of matter and energy is precisely balanced for the universe to maintain a flat shape. However, the density of matter and gravitational energy in the universe is much lower than what would be expected to uphold a flat configuration. According to standard expectations, this lower density should lead to either an overly rapid expansion or a collapse of the universe. This discrepancy prompts the question of how the universe manages to maintain its flat shape despite the seemingly inadequate density of matter and energy. In essence, the flatness problem is a perplexing mystery that challenges some of the greatest minds in the field of cosmology. Various potential solutions have been proposed, and one of them revolves around the elusive concept of dark energy. It is believed that this mysterious form of energy plays a role in accelerating the expansion of the universe. Dark energy is thought to contribute around 68% of the total energy in the present-day observable universe. With its negative pressure, dark energy acts as a repulsive force, countering the gravitational force of matter. This counteraction results in an accelerated expansion of the universe, a process that could help maintain its flatness despite the seemingly insufficient density of matter and energy. Another proposed solution to the flatness problem is the concept of inflation. According to the theory of inflation, the universe experienced a rapid expansion during its early stages of formation. As space expands, the geometry of space becomes flatter. To illustrate, envision a balloon being filled with air and inflating. Its surface becomes smoother and flatter. This type of expansion during inflation would effectively smooth out any initial density irregularities, contributing to the universe appearing nearly flat. The analogy of the balloon helps to understand how this expansion process can lead to a more uniform and flat geometry in the large-scale structure of the universe. The third solution to the flatness problem involves the multiverse theory, which posits that our universe is just one among many. According to this theory, there exists a multitude of universes, and within this vast array, the probability of encountering a flat universe is much higher than if there were only one universe. The idea is that variations in the fundamental constants and conditions across different universes could result in diverse geometric shapes, and among these, a flat universe becomes a statistically more plausible occurrence. The multiverse theory offers a perspective where the flatness of our universe is one of many potential configurations within the broader cosmic landscape. The monopole paradox is a persistent mystery in the universe, arising from the observation that no observable magnetic monopoles have been identified, despite their predicted existence in several particle physics theories. 
Magnetic monopoles are theoretical particles that possess a single magnetic pole, in contrast to known magnets that have both a north and south pole. The anticipation of these hypothetical particles is rooted in theories like the grand unified theory and quantum gravity theories. Despite significant efforts and extensive research, the search for magnetic monopoles has yielded no conclusive evidence of their existence. This paradox underscores the gap between theoretical predictions in particle physics and the current observational understanding of the universe. The absence of observable magnetic monopoles remains an unsolved puzzle within the realm of theoretical and experimental physics. Despite the elusive nature of magnetic monopoles, several theories attempt to explain their apparent absence. One possible explanation suggests that magnetic monopoles may be inherently unstable, causing them to decay into other particles. This decay process could render them undetectable in the modern universe. Another theory posits that magnetic monopoles were formed during a supersymmetry transition in the early universe. However, they have become exceedingly rare, making their observation difficult. The concept underlying this theory is that in the early universe, the symmetry of the fundamental laws of physics was different from what it is today. These symmetries underwent a phase transition, akin to how water changes from a liquid to a solid during freezing. This transition might have influenced the formation and subsequent scarcity of magnetic monopoles, contributing to the challenge of detecting them in the current cosmic landscape. During the phase transition in the early universe, magnetic monopoles were expected to appear as a consequence of symmetry breaking. However, as the universe expanded and cooled over time, these monopoles would have become increasingly diluted, making them too rare to be observed in the present era. The ongoing scientific quest to search for these hypothetical particles persists, driven by the desire to unravel the monopole paradox and deepen our understanding of the fundamental nature of the universe. Continued efforts in scientific research and experimentation aim to shed light on the existence and characteristics of magnetic monopoles, contributing to the broader exploration of particle physics and cosmology. The entropy paradox arises from the apparent contradiction between the ordered and structured nature of the universe and the second law of thermodynamics, which states that entropy, or disorder, must increase over time. Entropy is often discussed as a measure of disorder, representing the quantitative representation of randomness and chaos within a system. For example, a broken egg on the floor is said to have more entropy than an intact egg on the countertop and a chaotic pile of clothing has higher entropy than a neatly organized set of drawers. According to the second law of thermodynamics, the total entropy of an isolated system will always increase over time, implying that the universe should become less ordered as time progresses. However, the observed structure of the universe, including galaxies, stars, planets, and life forms, contradicts this expectation. Several theories have been proposed to address this paradox, each offering a different perspective on how the order and structure observed in our universe can be reconciled with the second law of thermodynamics. These solutions aim to provide insights into the fundamental principles governing the evolution of the universe and the relationship between entropy and cosmic organization. One idea is to think of entropy as a kind of time arrow, the arrow of time suggests that time moves in a specific direction from the past to the future. According to this notion, in a closed system, entropy tends to increase. However, in an open system like the universe, where matter and energy can freely exchange with the environment, the second law of thermodynamics may not always apply. Another theory proposes that, on a big scale, structures and order can pop up on their own, even if entropy is rising on a tiny scale. This notion suggests that while entropy goes up at a small level, it might result in order on a larger scale. Lastly, some scientists think that the expansion of the universe could solve the entropy paradox. As the universe expands, the volume of the observable universe grows, reducing the overall entropy of the system. This implies that even though entropy might increase in certain areas, 
The total entropy of the universe can stay the same or even decrease because of the universe's expansion. The last two theories share a similar concept and could possibly work together to address the entropy paradox. The expansion theory provides a solution by reducing the overall entropy of the system through the expansion of the universe. On the other hand, the emergence theory offers a solution by describing how structures and order can spontaneously appear even when entropy is increasing. Together, these theories might complement each other in providing a comprehensive understanding of the entropy paradox. The information paradox, also known as the black hole information paradox or Hawking's paradox, is a perplexing issue in theoretical physics. It posits that black holes absorb information, rendering it irretrievably lost. In the context of this paradox, information refers to quantum parameters that characterize the state of a physical system. These parameters encompass all the details required to precisely define the state of the system. They hold a crucial role in the principles of quantum mechanics, which asserts that the entirety of information in the universe is conserved, meaning it cannot be created or destroyed. The information paradox arises due to the conflict between two well-established theories in physics, quantum mechanics and the general theory of relativity. These theories coexist without interference up to a certain point, but the introduction of Hawking radiation changes the game. Stephen Hawking, in the 1970s, proposed that black holes emit thermal radiation devoid of any information about the matter that entered the black hole. This led to the unsettling idea that information is permanently lost when it enters a black hole, challenging the determinism of fundamental physics. Since its introduction by Hawking, the information paradox has been a focal point of scientific discussions and research. One suggested solution is black hole complementarity. This concept proposes that the information drawn into a black hole is not truly lost, but is instead encoded on the black hole's horizon. This encoding aligns with both quantum mechanics and the general theory of relativity. To grasp the complementarity of black holes, it's essential to consider the same physical process from two distinct perspectives. From the viewpoint of an observer outside the black hole, the information entering it appears lost forever as it is drawn towards the singularity at its center. However, from the perspective of an observer within the black hole, this information is encoded on the horizon in a manner consistent with quantum mechanics. Understanding the complementarity of black holes hinges on recognizing that a black hole's horizon serves as the boundary between two distinct regions of space-time. On one side of the horizon, the laws of general relativity govern, while on the other side, the laws of quantum mechanics take precedence. The information that falls into a black hole is encoded on the horizon in a manner that aligns with both sets of laws, offering a potential resolution to the information paradox. Another proposed solution is the firewall paradox, which suggests that information is not lost, but instead stored by a high-energy particle firewall surrounding the black hole. Despite these theories, the information paradox persists as one of the most challenging and significant unsolved mysteries in theoretical physics. It plays a crucial role in enhancing our comprehension of black holes, the principles of quantum mechanics and general relativity, and, most importantly, the ultimate fate of the universe. The dark matter and dark energy paradox, also known as Bentley's paradox, presents a challenge in physics due to a mismatch between the observed behavior of galaxies and other large-scale structures in the universe and the predictions of the standard model of the universe. A crucial element supporting the existence of dark matter and dark energy is the observed gravitational effects attributed to these enigmatic substances. The standard model of cosmology, based on general relativity, predicts that the observed gravitational effects of the rotation curves of galaxies and the large-scale structures of galaxy clusters should be much weaker than they actually are. This disparity is known as the gravitational paradox, 
prompting scientists to propose the existence of dark matter and dark energy to account for these unexpected gravitational effects. Dark matter is thought to constitute approximately 27% of the universe, and its existence is postulated based on its gravitational influence on visible matter. Dark matter does not interact with light or other forms of electromagnetic radiation, making direct detection challenging. Scientists have put forth various candidates for dark matter, such as weakly interacting massive particles, often referred to as WIMPs and axions. Despite decades of research, none of these candidates have been conclusively detected. In addition to dark matter, scientists believe that dark energy makes up about 68% of the observable universe. Dark energy is thought to be responsible for the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. The existence of dark energy is confirmed based on observations, but its nature is not entirely clear. The most widely accepted explanation for dark energy is the cosmological constant proposed by Einstein, which represents a form of energy uniformly distributed throughout the universe. However, this explanation introduces some challenges, including the cosmological constant problem and the coincidence problem. The cosmological constant problem arises from the observed value of the cosmological constant being much lower than theoretical predictions. Additionally, the coincidence problem stems from the fact that the cosmological constant has the same order of magnitude as the density of dark matter. It's important to note that the current standard model of cosmology, known as the Lambda CDM model, incorporates the concepts of dark matter and dark energy. This model aligns well with a broad range of observational data and is considered the most successful model of the universe to date. Bentley's paradox emphasizes the mystery surrounding the exact nature of dark matter and dark energy, despite their significant presence in the universe. Numerous theories have been proposed to elucidate the properties of dark matter and dark energy, yet none have been definitively proven accurate. The potential discovery of new particles or phenomena that could shed light on the nature of these mysterious entities would represent a significant breakthrough in our comprehension of the universe. It's crucial to recognize that the paradoxes encountered while exploring the universe and its governing laws should not be viewed as obstacles. Instead, they present opportunities for growth and development in our understanding of the cosmos. Each challenge, such as the mysteries surrounding dark matter and dark energy, serves as a catalyst for scientific inquiry, encouraging researchers to explore new avenues and deepen our knowledge of the fundamental principles that govern the universe. They're like challenging puzzles that stretch what we know and need new ideas and explanations. This sparks more research in cosmology. Every time we solve one of these puzzles, it's not just fixing a specific issue, but it also helps us understand more about how our universe works overall. At some point in our lives, we've likely wondered if there's anyone else out there in the universe. With so many planets in our own and distant galaxies orbiting numerous stars, it's puzzling why we haven't found any signs of extraterrestrial life. But what if advanced alien beings have been around for a while and are purposely staying hidden? According to the Dark Forest hypothesis, civilizations with advanced technology beyond our solar system might already exist. However, they might be avoiding contact out of fear of potential attacks from other civilizations or they might be getting ready to attack themselves. Today, we'll explore the dark forest theory and why there might be reasons to be cautious about making our presence known in the vast cosmos. 1. The Dark Forest Hypothesis The origin and primary source of the Dark Forest Hypothesis, DFH, can be attributed to science fiction writer Liu Cixin, not Liu Sashin, as mentioned in the text. It's important to note that DFH is a concept from science fiction, not a scientific theory grounded in concrete evidence. Liu Cixin introduced this idea in his successful fiction novel titled The Dark Forest, published in 2008. The central idea of the theory is that on a cosmic scale, every civilization seeks resources crucial for its survival. Consequently, extraterrestrial life hides to avoid destruction by other civilizations and to be in a position to launch an attack for its own survival. 
The term dark forest is metaphorical, drawing a comparison to a forest inhabited solely by hunters. In Liu Cixin's novel, civilizations are depicted as metaphorical hunters moving silently in a dark forest, fearing discovery by other hunters. If one civilization finds another, the incentive is to attack first to ensure a survival. This concept reflects the precarious coexistence of civilizations in a vast cosmic landscape. It's important to emphasize that DFH is a fictional idea from a novel and not a scientific hypothesis supported by empirical evidence. Hiding from threats. Imagine if there are other alien civilizations out there, but they're staying hidden because they're afraid of being attacked. This idea, called the Dark Forest Hypothesis, suggests that every civilization is looking out for its survival, creating a chain of suspicion where mistrust grows due to a lack of communication. Silent communication. The second idea is that if a civilization broadcasts signals, like radio signals, it might reveal its location and become a target for others who want its resources. Giving away your location could mean getting captured or destroyed. Rare cooperation. In this system, civilizations rarely work together because each one is focused on surviving and expanding urging us to question things we thought were certain. These paradoxes push us to look beyond our current understanding and explore the deeper mysteries of the cosmos. Ultimately, facing these paradoxes can lead to new insights, propelling us forward in our quest to grasp the intricacies of the universe. The horizon problem, also known as the horizon paradox, arises from the puzzling observation that the temperature of the cosmic microwave background radiation, or CMB, is nearly uniform across space. This is perplexing because regions of the universe, even those separated by immense distances, haven't had sufficient time to reach thermal equilibrium, considering the constraints of the cosmic timeline. The root cause of the horizon problem lies in the cosmic microwave background, CMB, which is a remnant from the time the universe was in a hot and dense state during the Big Bang. The CMB is essentially nearly perfect black body radiation, characterized by a uniform temperature of approximately 2.7 Kelvin in all directions. However, given the continuous expansion of the universe over about 13.8 billion years, certain regions separated by vast distances wouldn't have had sufficient time to reach thermal equilibrium and thus should not exhibit the same temperature. This paradox challenges the expectation that the temperature of the CMB should be uniform throughout the universe. The horizon problem has puzzled cosmologists for decades, prompting the exploration of various proposed solutions. A proposed solution to the horizon problem is the theory of cosmic inflation. According to this theory, the universe experienced a rapid expansion during its early stages of formation. This expansion would have effectively smoothed out any initial fluctuations in temperature, resulting in the near-uniform temperature of the cosmic microwave background, CMB, observed throughout the universe. Inflation models not only address the horizon problem, but also provide explanations for the observed homogeneity and isotropy of the universe, contributing to solving major observational mysteries in cosmology. Another potential solution to the horizon problem involves the concept of causality, a fundamental principle in the sciences. Causality posits that every occurrence, action or event is preceded by a cause that determines its effect. In the context of the early universe, the idea is that it was initially in equilibrium, much denser and hotter. During this early state, photons of relic radiation were in causal contact, meaning they could interact with each other and achieve thermal equilibrium. This scenario suggests that the uniformity observed in the cosmic microwave background radiation, CMB, across vast distances could be a result of the causal interactions among particles in the early, dense and hot universe. The third solution proposed is the concept of cosmic variance, Essentially, this idea posits that the universe is far larger than what we can currently observe, and temperature fluctuations are just statistical deviations from the average temperature of the universe as a whole. The horizon problem is intricate and multidimensional, and it has not been completely resolved yet. 
Each of the proposed solutions, including cosmic inflation, causality, and cosmic variance, comes with its own set of strengths and weaknesses. Achieving a true resolution of the paradox may necessitate a combination of these ideas or even the development of an entirely new theory. Olber's paradox, also known as the redshift paradox, has perplexed astronomers for centuries. Named after the pioneering German astronomer Heinrich Olbers, this paradox revolves around the contradiction between the presumed infinite number of stars in the universe and the darkness of the night sky. The crux of the paradox lies in the idea that if the universe were genuinely infinite and eternal, with stars evenly spread throughout its limitless expanse, then in any direction we looked, we should encounter a star. According to this line of thinking, the light from these stars, no matter how distant, would eventually reach our planet. Therefore, the night sky should be aglow with the same intensity as the surface of the sun. However, the paradox arises from the observable darkness of the night sky despite the theoretical abundance of stars in the universe. Despite the logical reasoning, the night sky continues to pose a perplexing enigma for scientists and stargazers alike. Various potential solutions have been proposed to shed light on this mystery. One such solution challenges the assumption of a uniform and isotropic universe, suggesting that stars are not evenly distributed throughout space. This uneven distribution could be attributed to the presence of large-scale structures like galaxy clusters and voids, creating dark patches in the night sky. Additionally, the darkness of the night sky might be influenced by the absorption of light from more distant stars by intergalactic dust, further contributing to its dim appearance. Observations of major redshifts and distant quasars support this theory. In essence, the discrepancy between the theoretical expectation of an illuminated night sky and the observed darkness may find its explanation in the non-uniform nature of the universe and the effects of intergalactic dust. Another possible solution to Ober's paradox lies in the expansion of the universe. As we peer further back in time, the light sources appear to be more distant from us. When looking into the past, the universe becomes denser, hotter and brighter. Consequently, the light from these distant stars is redshifted moving toward the red end of the spectrum and becoming too faint to be seen, while the infinite nature of our universe remains uncertain. The Big Bang Theory establishes that our universe does have a beginning. If we assume the universe is finite, the expansion would mean that light from distant stars does not reach us because our universe is continually expanding. This expansion causes the wavelength of light from distant stars to be significantly stretched, eventually reaching Earth in the infrared range. Moreover, it implies that the light from distant stars may not have reached us yet, or those stars have already ceased to exist. Alternatively, if we assume that our universe is infinite, it becomes plausible that, over time, due to the constant expansion of the universe, stars and matter could eventually attain speeds surpassing the speed of light. In such a scenario, it would be impossible for light to reach Earth, contributing to the darkness observed in the night sky. The enigma of Olber's paradox remains one of the most intriguing mysteries in cosmology, and unravelling its solution necessitates a deeper understanding of the nature and structure of our universe. The flatness problem is a paradox stemming from the observation that the universe is almost perfectly flat, despite the density of its matter being insufficient to maintain such a state. This raises the question of why the universe is flat and what exactly is meant by classifying it in this way. In cosmology, the term flat signifies that space-time is not curved and the amount of matter and energy is precisely balanced for the universe to maintain a flat shape. However, the density of matter and gravitational energy in the universe is much lower than what would be expected to uphold a flat configuration. According to standard expectations, this lower density should lead to either an overly rapid expansion or a collapse of the universe. This discrepancy prompts the question of how the universe manages to maintain its flat shape despite the seemingly inadequate density of matter and energy. 
In essence, the flatness problem is a perplexing mystery that challenges some of the greatest minds in the field of cosmology. Various potential solutions have been proposed, and one of them revolves around the elusive concept of dark energy. It is believed that this mysterious form of energy plays a role in accelerating the expansion of the universe. Dark energy is thought to contribute around 68% of the total energy in the present-day observable universe. With its negative pressure, dark energy acts as a repulsive force, countering the gravitational force of matter. This counteraction results in an accelerated expansion of the universe, a process that could help maintain its flatness despite the seemingly insufficient density of matter and energy. Another proposed solution to the flatness problem is the concept of inflation. According to the theory of inflation, the universe experienced a rapid expansion during its early stages of formation. As space expands, the geometry of space becomes flatter. To illustrate, envision a balloon being filled with air and inflating. Its surface becomes smoother and flatter. This type of expansion during inflation would effectively smooth out any initial density irregularities, contributing to the universe appearing nearly flat. The analogy of the balloon helps to understand how this expansion process can lead to a more uniform and flat geometry in the large-scale structure of the universe. The third solution to the flatness problem involves the multiverse theory. The dark forest hypothesis introduces the concern that sending signals into space, intended for other civilizations, could pose a threat to Earth's security. This viewpoint is shared by many astrophysicists, including Stephen Hawking. The idea is rooted in the belief that the probability of Earth being conquered is higher than other potential outcomes, and therefore caution should be exercised in broadcasting signals into space. The interest in searching for alien civilizations heightened after a breakthrough in space research in the mid-20th century. In 1974, the famous Arecibo message was sent to a star cluster 21,000 light-years away, marking one of the early attempts to communicate with extraterrestrial intelligence. Subsequently, several radio messages have been transmitted into space, with the latest known transmission dating back to 2017. Stephen Hawking expressed concern that such messages could lead to a scenario akin to the Dark Forest Hypothesis. In his perspective, if an alien civilization were to visit Earth, it might have consequences similar to the effects of the colonization of America on its native inhabitants in the 15th century. Consequently, he advocated for the cessation of this type of communication to mitigate potential risks. This viewpoint reflects a cautious approach in the face of uncertainties about the nature and intentions of extraterrestrial civilizations. However, alternative perspectives exist among scientists. SETI astrobiologist Douglas Vakosh, for instance, argued that the fear of sending messages could lead to Earth's isolationism. Additionally, the notion that extraterrestrial civilizations had opportunities to attack Earth during its early development challenges, the fear of being heard by them. Furthermore, the Dark Forest hypothesis itself introduces the idea of differences in hunter behavior among alien civilizations. Not all of them would necessarily pose a threat if they detected our signals. A group of independent researchers, led by the Global Catastrophic Risk Institute Seth Baum, suggested that beyond potentially dangerous civilizations, there might also be neutral civilizations that prefer to hide and avoid contact. Additionally, some civilizations could potentially establish friendly relationships with Earth and contribute to solving global problems. In conclusion, the Dark Forest hypothesis is not the sole answer to the question of why we haven't encountered extraterrestrial life. The debate involves considering various perspectives, from caution and fear of potential threats to arguments in favor of communication and the possibility of diverse and benevolent extraterrestrial civilizations. Several ideas try to explain why we haven't found any signs of extraterrestrial life. Some say it's because civilizations might be too far apart or the chances of other living beings emerging are low. However, 
We can't say for sure if Lu Shashin's theory is true or false at this point. We don't have enough evidence to confirm or deny it. Many of us have watched science fiction films and wondered about the possible appearance of aliens. Some envision extraterrestrial life as similar to us, with a few biological differences, while others imagine it to be completely different from humans. Renowned science fiction writer Isaac Asimov even described some forms of alien life as living stones with a silicon-based chemical composition, unlike our carbon-based structure. Today, we'll explore our biology and consider whether the existence of silicon-based life is plausible. Carbon serves as the foundation of our life. Without it, our existence might not be possible. It constitutes about 18% or 26 pounds of our total body weight, playing a structural role by forming a framework for molecules and organic substances essential for our life, such as proteins, fats, carbohydrates, sugars, and even DNA. Additionally, carbon plays a crucial role for many life forms around us, including plants. When we exhale carbon dioxide, plants use it for photosynthesis, producing oxygen and organic substances like glucose. Carbon dioxide, or CO2, is also the gas responsible for trapping heat in our atmosphere, which is crucial for sustaining life on Earth. The harmful greenhouse effect prevents us from freezing. Beyond its significance in biology, it's essential to highlight carbon's role in manufacturing. Most daily items, from clothes and medicine to your favorite cup of coffee, the house you live in, musical instruments, and the phone or laptop you're using to watch this video, contain carbon. All these things couldn't exist without it. Carbon's chemical versatility and its ability to form extensive chains with other elements make it practically indispensable. According to astrobiologist Robert Hazen, a vital chemical element must actively form bonds with other elements, not be too reactive to avoid combustion during interactions, and form strong, long-term bonds while being able to store and transmit information. Carbon meets these criteria, making it superior among the most crucial building blocks on Earth and potentially beyond. But is carbon the only thing that can be the base for life? What if carbon wasn't there in outer space? What element could take the place of carbon? The potential answer might be right below carbon in the periodic table, silicon. Silicon is a common element on Earth, making up about 28% of its total mass. It can be found in various forms like sand, amethyst, clay and granite. Similar to carbon, silicon has diverse applications in our daily lives, it is widely used in processors, phones, computers, and is a key element in silicone compounds utilized in cosmetics, medicine, aviation, construction, and more. In terms of its role in biological life, researcher Milton Wainwright suggests that silicon may have influenced the emergence of life on Earth. His research indicates that silicon from outer space could stimulate bacteria growth, even in nutrient-limited conditions. It's theorized that billions of years ago, comets carrying silicon bombarded Earth during the solar system's formation, contributing to the development of bacteria. Beyond its historical significance, silicon is crucial for plant development, offering protection against physical and chemical threats, making plants more resistant to diseases and water loss. In humans and animals, silicon plays a vital role in healthy bone development, wound healing, and may even reduce the risk of conditions like Alzheimer's and cardiovascular disease. Silicon can be seen as having a supporting role in our lives. Now, why is it being considered as a possible substitute for carbon in alien life? One significant reason is their chemical similarity. Silicon is positioned right below carbon in the periodic table, and each element in the table can form chemical bonds, where the electrons of each atom combine. Both silicon and carbon are tetravalent, meaning they can bond to four atoms. This similarity suggests that silicon, like carbon, can likely form long and robust bonds with various elements. 
Another reason silicon is considered as a potential alternative for carbon in alien life is the successful synthesis of molecules made entirely of silicon and carbon. In 2016, a team of scientists from the California Institute of Technology, led by Francis Arnold, achieved this breakthrough. Moreover, their study showed that E. coli bacteria could produce proteins containing this silicon carbon compound. This experiment led scientists to the conclusion that silicon-based life could be possible beyond Earth. To determine whether silicon could replace carbon, we need to understand the biological definition of life and the criteria for it to exist. Scientist Norman Pace defines life as the ability of an organism to replicate itself and develop sufficiently to overcome evolutionary challenges. For instance, developing organs for movement allows easier travel across land. The building blocks of this organism must adapt quickly to new conditions, meeting ecological criteria such as oxygen, nitrogen, moderate temperatures, and water. Life as we know it relies on water, a solvent where compounds can create essential bonds. Carbon, with its ability to form a stable framework, suits water-based organisms. However, can silicon make the necessary connections for life to exist? The short answer is no. Silicon lacks the versatility of carbon in forming these vital connections. But it's not the end of the story. While water is a common solvent, other solvents could theoretically support life. Liquid ammonia, found on Jupiter and Pluto, is one such alternative. However, NH3, ammonia, is highly toxic, potentially hindering the development of silicon-based life. This theory remains untested, and scientists continue to explore alternative conditions for life beyond the traditional water-based model. Apart from liquid ammonia, another potential solvent for life is sulfuric acid, H2SO4. While sulfuric acid is known for dissolving most metals without residue, it's intriguingly possible for silicon to develop in it. This suggests that, in theory, organisms containing silicon could emerge on planets with a sulfuric acid environment, such as Venus. Silicon can also exist in cold solvents like methane and ethane, which become liquids at low temperatures, as seen on Titan, one of Saturn's moons. However, the challenge in such cold environments lies in the significantly slowed down chemical processes and reduced solubility. Although silicon could combine with other elements at low temperatures, silicon compounds might not dissolve quickly. This sluggish dissolution makes it challenging for life to emerge in these conditions. Regarding the structural function, silicon, like carbon, can combine with essential elements for life, including nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, sulfur, and even some metals. However, silicon lacks the versatility and adaptability of carbon. Unlike carbon, silicon cannot develop in water, and it doesn't form bonds at moderate temperatures, between 32 and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. This limitation means silicon can only combine with other elements at excessively high or significantly low temperatures, making it challenging for life to form bonds with silicon. Moreover, unlike carbon, silicon does not bond well with itself. The bonds between two silicon atoms cannot build a very large framework for cells, which is crucial for the structural complexity of living organisms. These limitations further suggest that silicon may not be as suitable as carbon for the fundamental building blocks of life. Consider a diamond. It's entirely made of carbon, showcasing the strength of compounds this element can form. In contrast, silicon tends to combine with oxygen and this aligns with the difficulty of envisioning silicon-based life on Earth. Silicon is commonly found in the form of SiO2, essentially sand, making it challenging to separate the two elements. This indicates that silicon is less versatile than carbon, which forms equally strong bonds with other elements. If we were to replace carbon with silicon in our bodies, instead of exhaling carbon dioxide, we would be exhaling sand. Besides respiration, carbon plays a crucial role in our nutrition. Food serves as an excellent energy source, contributing to our vitality and well-being. Our source of energy isn't the food itself, but the compounds it contains, such as glucose. 
As you might have guessed, glucose is also made of carbon. Furthermore, when we don't have the opportunity to eat and need energy, another carbon compound, like starch, can come to our aid. It's stored in the liver and used to replenish our glucose supply when necessary. However, these bonds would be unstable with silicon, meaning they would not be able to adequately support our life. While it's unlikely for silicon to replace carbon entirely, the evolution of silicon-based life is possible. However, the likelihood of an organism containing only silicon-building complex chemical bonds is highly doubtful. Silicon-based organisms have not been found on Earth, but silicon is a crucial secondary component for many plants and animals, somewhat considering it a part of ourselves. In our oceans, diatoms, a type of algae, have cell walls made of transparent SiO2, silicon dioxide. While this doesn't make them silicon-based life forms, it does demonstrate that silicon can act as a building block for living organisms. Concerning other planets, a study led by Ricardo Gabato suggests that the ideal conditions for the development of silicon-based life include the virtual absence of oxygen, water temperatures above 428 degrees Fahrenheit or below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, atmospheric pressure much higher than on Earth, and a solvent like sulfuric acid or methane. Some planets in our solar system meet some or almost all of these criteria. For instance, Titan, the largest moon of Saturn, and possibly Venus, could be candidates for the origin of silicon-based life. Titan boasts numerous methane and ethane lakes, along with a nitrogen atmosphere, creating excellent conditions. Venus, despite its hot surface and high pressure, could also harbour silicon-based life, especially in its yellow clouds of sulfuric acid. Although any hypothetical silicon organisms on Venus might contain more carbon than silicon due to the prevalent carbon in the atmosphere. Surprisingly, hypothetical carbon planets are also considered candidates for silicon-based life. Currently, scientists know of one such exoplanet, 55 Cancri E, located 40 light-years away. These planets likely form farther from their parent star, potentially having solvents suitable for silicon on their surface and hypothetically lacking water. Additionally, carbon planets might be rich in heavy hydrocarbons like butane, which could be suitable for silicon-carbon bonding. However, compounds like silicon carbide are very strong, suggesting that their decomposition would be a lengthy and energy-intensive process. Therefore, even if life were to start developing on a carbon planet, it would be a slow and protracted journey. If we entertain the idea that silicon-based life has existed, recognizing it becomes a challenging task. Sci-fi writers often depict such life forms as living stones, but in reality, silicon-based life might not resemble this imagery. Just as we are not covered in diamonds and human-made items like atoms look nothing like stones, silicon-based life could have diverse appearances. In reality, scientists don't have a clear picture of what silicon-based life might look like. They assume that it's unlikely to resemble life as we know it in terms of chemical complexity or even intelligence. Therefore, the prospect of encountering life forms similar to us, or stone people, is improbable. Identifying such alien organisms would be challenging, especially without advanced technology, as we wouldn't know what molecules to look for. Humans find it difficult to envision life developing in conditions significantly different from those on Earth. Most space missions focus on finding structures or conditions similar to what we know, limiting our ability to detect truly alien forms of life. Currently, our scientific limitations prevent us from knowing if life predominantly made of silicon exists. The cosmos is vast and diverse, making it impossible for us to say with certainty that all alien life in the billions of galaxies is carbon-based. The exploration of different possibilities is an ongoing and intriguing aspect of our understanding of the universe. Thank you for watching.